If your marriage is on the brink of divorce or your relationship's just not working, you've lost that communication, sex, intimacy, respect, you might have heard about something called the five love languages. And I'm here to tell you today that those are absolute bullshit. They don't work unless you implement the four steps I'm about to share with you. So in today's podcast, I'm going to break down what the five love languages are, why they actually don't work, and what you need to do instead to have the relationships you deserve. This can help you fix a marriage, better relationship with your staff at work, your children, and ultimately get the results you want in life. So strap on in. I hope you get value from this week's podcast episode. If you don't know who I am, my name is Tony Versick, the founder of The Empowered Man, and we've helped over 5,000 men fix their marriages and keep their families together while also building wealth and making heaps of money. So step one here is actually understanding what the love languages are. This is the book right here by Gary Chapman. It's called The Five Love Languages, The Secret to Love That Lasts. And I'd highly recommend you give it a read or just Google a summary. I'm gonna break it down for you now anyway in the next like two minutes. The old version of this book, by the way, was called How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate. Wow. In the politically correct world now, we cannot talk about that. So basically what this book talks about is that there are five different languages uh, to express love to someone. And they are words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and gifts. I'm gonna break down each of these and why they're actually the wrong way to look at it in just a second. So the first one is words of affirmation. This is telling somebody through your words, through your language, either saying it out loud, in a text, in an email, even writing a handwritten note to affirm them, basically to tell them what you like about them or praise them or to just give them some sort of, I suppose, love. Now, this is one that I resonate with a lot as a hardworking business owner, husband, father, I grind, I sacrifice my entire life for my family and I'm happy to do that. Sacrifice is mandatory, suffering is optional. So when my wife tells me that she's proud of me or that she appreciates me, that makes everything worth it. Now, if I say to my wife that I appreciate her, it doesn't mean anything to her. Interesting, right? The second type of way to give love is quality time. So there's two types of time. There's quantity time and there's quality time. Quantity time is the amount of time you spend with someone. Quality time is a little bit different. Quality time means not scrolling on your phone on opposite ends of the couch. Quality time means you're in the moment, you're experiencing life together, and you actually aren't distracted by other things. So again, my wife loves this one. For me, I love it too, but it's not my favorite one. Third one is physical touch. So physical touch is just like it sounds like touching each other. It's sex, holding hands, kissing. It's that spark of physicality, which is so important for a relationship, at least a romantic one. We're going to get into business stuff in a second. You don't want to be uh, touching or kissing your team members. That's a sexual harassment charge. So physical touch is a massive one for most men. We want to have sex. We want to be intimate. And you're about to find out why the love languages can fuck men over because we want that sex. But most women, most women, not all, there's some lucky men out there who have a very physical partner. They actually don't have a physical touch partner. And you go, why am I not having enough sex? Fourth one is acts of service. So that's doing something for someone, opening the door for them, pulling out the chair for your wife. Very romantic thing to do. Acts of service is the act of doing something, serving that person. So in my relationship, an act of service is bathing our daughter at the end of the day. It's helping out with the dishes. And on my wife's end, an act of service is me working hard for the family or her making sure that there's dinner on the table. And the fifth one is receiving gifts. Okay, so a lot of women love to get gifts, but sometimes they don't like the gifts you give them. Now, so those are the five different love languages. The first problem with the love languages, why are they ineffective, is because most of us are just simply not aware of them or how they operate in our day-to-day -day life. You're not aware that your partner likes, likes gifts or likes quality time. And even though you are aware, life gets in the way, you get busy trying to provide, put food on the table, make money, and therefore you forget about these things. And if you're not aware of something, if you don't have a good enough reason to remember it, you're not very likely to implement it. Not only are you not aware of them, but your partner is often not aware of them. So that's the biggest problem is like, these are great, but unless you've read this book, it doesn't fucking impact your life because no one teaches us this shit. No one teaches us how to communicate and connect. The second reason the love languages are ineffective is because they assume that they're all created equal, right? So there I could get my wife a gift and I could get her a bunch of flowers. My wife's allergic to flowers, right? So she doesn't like that gift. 
Now I could buy her a Gucci handbag and she would be beaming because she likes expensive things. Un unfortunately she does and that's okay. I like providing nice things for her. So I can give her two different gifts and one day she loves it and the next day she's quite disappointed. This has happened a few times on her birthday. I've, I've not got her a gift or I've got her something she didn't like. I can spend quality time with my wife and I can go, I'm sacrificing time in the business. I'm gonna spend time with you. And there are times where she's happy and bubbly and there's times where she doesn't appreciate it. Have you ever experienced this before? Because these things are not created equal. We're gonna go even deeper in a second, but just understand if you're not aware of them, if they're not aware of them, then that's gonna be a massive problem. Now, the third reason they don't work is because most people don't actually categorize them. Now it's talked about in this book, but you're gonna have one or two which are your primary love languages. And the problem is that if my love language is physical touch, I love sex, I love intimacy with my wife, and words of affirmation, I just wanted to tell me that she loves me and that she appreciates me and she can see how hard I'm working. But if Rosie's love languages are that she wants quality time and she wants gifts, we have two separate love languages. So I'm giving her what I think love is, words of affirmation, I'm proud of you, I'm giving her what I think love is. I'm touching her. I want to have sex with her. And she's not receiving that because those aren't hers. Hers are gifts and quality time. So she's trying to give me time, but I'm busy. She gives me gifts. I'm like, I don't want gifts. Now we're misaligned. So the problem with love languages, we don't know what they are. And we don't know how to actually meet each other's love languages because by default, we give things that are unique to us. We've got to define what our love languages are and categorize them. What are your top ones? What are your least favorite ones? And then be adaptable to that relationship. Now I'm going to break down in a second how you can implement these love languages on a much deeper level, not just in your relationship with your partner or wife, but with your children in your business or career to be a better leader. There is truly a simple system you can use to take every single relationship in your life to the next level. So let's break down what that actually is. Well, if we take the love languages deeper, it's a great starting point, but on their own, they are bullshit. We want to go into why they actually work. And the reason that they actually work is because the love languages make people feel something and it's not just the love. Before I explain this, Coca-Cola is a drinks company. It's one of the largest, I think it is the largest drinks company in the world. I could be wrong about that. Worth billions of dollars. Now Coca-Cola, a can of Coke, doesn't sell a drink. Coca-Cola sell an emotion. They sell a feeling. They advertise that when you open up an ice cold Coke on a hot day, you feel happiness. And it's actually true. When you drink that Coca-Cola, you have a feeling within your body of like, wow, I feel really good. It happens to me. And I know Coke's bad for me. It's the exact same in our relationships. Sales and marketing is a feeling. You're listening to this video and podcast right now and going, this feels good. That's why you're still on the fucking page, right? So if we take it a step deeper, love languages, words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, gifts, great. But what do those things make us feel? At an empowered man, we teach something called laser focus. L A S you are and what laser focus means is love appreciation support understanding and respect so when you give your partner words of affirmation and she doesn't receive it that means that that technique didn't make her feel loved it didn't make her feel appreciated didn't make her feel supported understood or respected now Maybe you're like me and your brain goes, wait a minute, I told my wife I'm proud of her and she doesn't feel appreciated. I told her I appreciate all the hard work you're doing around the house and she doesn't feel appreciated. That makes no sense. And that's because the action has a feeling attached to it or it doesn't. Have you ever tried to give your partner love before and they haven't felt it or received it and then you feel disappointed? This is where the victim mentality comes in. I'm doing my fucking best. No, you're not listening to the feedback that you're being given in that relationship. Have you ever had a business or career where you've tried to lead someone and you don't feel respected and you're doing your best? I'm putting in all this work, acts of service. I'm giving you all this time, quality of time, and they don't respect you. It's because they're not feeling it even though you intend to deliver it. If you take one lesson from this, every time you try and give someone energy in a relationship, you are giving, you are delivering. 
but they receive it differently to how you deliver it. And this all comes back to emotions. Mind blowing, right? Women are emotional creatures. There might be a day where the same thing that's going to make them feel loved and appreciated and supported doesn't make them feel those things because their emotions are so up and down and they're quite hormonal creatures. It's politically incorrect to say that these days, but it's true. Men are more resilient to stress. Women are not. And stress and hormonal fluctuations massively impact our partner. So not only do we need to know what these love languages are and which ones our partner do and don't like, we also need to be very cognizant and aware of how our partner's feeling that day and how we make them feel. We can't make them feel anything, but you don't need to tell them that. How they receive what we're giving. So the best way to do this is to understand from your partner, not just what their love languages are, but how do they receive love? How do they receive appreciation? How do they receive support? How do they receive understanding and how do they receive respect? You might be thinking, well, fuck me. How do I figure that out? It's actually really simple. You ask, <laughs> which is really hard for a lot of guys. Simple doesn't mean easy and simple often gets overlooked. I've had many conversations with my wife, Rosie, and I realized that the way she feels loved is when she feels good about herself. The way she feels appreciated is not by me telling her I appreciate her, but when I actually work hard and then I spend time with her. So quality time for her makes her feel appreciated. When I bathe our daughter acts of service, when I help out around the house, she feels supported. When my wife is stressed and overwhelmed and the house is a mess or she's not committing to her end of the bargain because we have had discussions in our social contract of what our relationship looks like and I used to get judgmental and angry, she wouldn't feel understood. But simply by not saying anything, spending time with her, not telling her off words of affirmation in a negative way, she feels understood. When I tell her that she's doing amazing and she's a great mother, she doesn't hear a bar of it. But when she says, oh, the house is a mess, I'm sorry. And I say, babe, it's fine. She feels understood. So the words land differently in different situations. And my wife feels respected when I make her feel heard. It's really important to understand how you feel emotions in your relationships. And the crazy thing is every relationship is different. So you might feel appreciation from your partner a different way to how you feel it from your children. You might feel respect from your staff or team members differently. How do you feel it from your partner? It's really important to just know about yourself. How do you receive love, appreciation, support, understanding and respect? And how do you give it? For me, it's completely different. The way I feel loved by my wife is when she wants to have sex with me. That's not how she feels loved. The way I feel appreciated by my wife is when she tells me I appreciate you. That's not how she feels appreciation. The way I feel supported by my wife is when everything's looked after in the house and I can go downstairs and there is peace, not chaos. That's not how she feels supported. The way I feel understood by my wife is when she asks me, how was your day? That's not how she feels supported. The way I feel respected by my wife is when she listens to me when I ask her to do something, which I'm not telling her what to do. I'm just asking because I know what I need. Very different to how she feels it. Hey, if you're getting value from this video, we literally build out game plans and roadmaps for men to fix their marriage, be better fathers, make more money, basically have it all in health, wealth, and relationships. So if you want a custom roadmap on how to fix your marriage or just have a great marriage or just have the life you deserve and become the best man you can be, then go to the link down below and book a coaching session with our Empowered Man team. Literally just put in your name, email, phone number. We'll send you over two grand worth of free content and you'll be able to speak to my team for free to get a custom roadmap and build out the life you deserve. So how do we tie this all together? Well, it's, it's a very simple process. It's just gonna require a commitment of your time. It'll take you 10 minutes. Write a list of the five love languages. Words of affirmation, quality time, physical touch, acts of service, receiving gifts. And rank those five in order for you and then do the exact same for your partner. It's just guesswork at this stage if you've never done this before. What are your top five? Which is the one you love the most? The second, third, fourth, and fifth. And then do the exact same for your partner. Now what you wanna do is you wanna write down how do you receive love, appreciation, support, understanding, respect. And you wanna do the exact same for your partner. You can also do this, by the way, in business with a team member, a manager. You can do it with your children. You want to know consciously, have awareness 
for each and every relationship in your life, at least a bit of a glance or a clue, how people receive these feelings, not just the acts of service, the, the love languages, how do they feel things in relationships? Relationships are simply transactions. They're transformations of energy. You feed a relationship just like you put time and energy into a business. You put time and energy into a relationship, it either grows or it dies. It's the exact same in business and relationships. So what are your love languages in order and for your partner? How do you receive love, appreciation, support, understanding, respect? What do you want from that person? What do you think they want? And then how do you give it? How do you give those things? And how do they give it? And you'll see there's gonna be a disconnect between how you're giving and how you're receiving. And the final step here is to have a conversation about this. Sit down with your partner, sit down with your team member and explain that you're not feeling respected or that you feel like this is how they get respect and have a difficult conversation about this. Now, at this stage, you're probably gonna be thinking that's way too fucking hard. Yes, it's difficult, it's challenging, which is also why so many men come and work with us because we can build this out for you. As a matter of fact, if you want help, go to the link down below, go put in your email, name, phone number, and we'll be in contact. You can book a free coaching session with our team and we'll help you build this out. But the point is that if it's difficult for you to do, it's only difficult because you haven't practiced it. I've coached thousands of very successful men. Some of them make over $100 million a year. And it's fascinating because in business or our career, we're pretty good at communicating most of the time. But in our personal relationships, we struggle to take that same communication and connection into our personal uh, relationships. And this is why divorces happen. This is why marriages break down. This is why children are raised in broken homes. So if it's hard, that just means you haven't practiced enough. How many times have you got this awareness? How many conversations have you had? This is also where once a week, my wife and I, we have a conversation and we ask ourselves these questions. What did I do that you're upset about this week? How was your love this week? Did you feel loved? Why slash why not? Did you feel appreciated? Why slash why not? Did you feel supported? Why slash why not? Did you feel respected? Why slash why not? And then once we've got the feedback from each other, we make one commitment for the week ahead. And that means we're constantly leveling up in our relationship. And guess what happens? We fuck it up sometimes. We make mistakes. We stop feeling those things, but we always rebuild it. It's really difficult to separate if you stay aligned and communicate about these things. And just so you're aware, I've been using this for years in my business with my daughter. She's almost three, so three years with her. And with my wife, Rosie, we're coming on eight and a half years together. And what it's allowed me to have, it has allowed me to have a relationship with my team and my business where they respect me, they work hard for me, they don't wanna let me down because I'm able to give them what they want and they know how to give me what I want because I've communicated with them. I've created a relationship where they understand what I need and I understand what they need. In my marriage, Rosie and I, after eight years, still have sex, we're still intimate, we still have great conversations, we fall in love over and over again and that's how a marriage should be. But it's because we understand what we both want and we understand that there's a disconnect between what she wants and what I want. And we get to come to the table and meet each other's needs, even though we have different ways of delivering that. And with my daughter, I'm teaching her these lessons so that when she's older, she doesn't need YouTube videos like this one or podcasts or coaches. She's got it covered. This will change your life. The first step is awareness. What are the love languages? How do they make you feel on both sides? Have a conversation about that. I hope you got value from this week's podcast. Obviously there's so much more to it, but this will help you immensely. If you did get value, please smash the like button if you're watching on YouTube or give it five stars on a podcast platform. We release all of this content for free to keep families together and help you have the relationships, health and wealth you deserve. Now, if you do wanna take this to the next level and get coaching from me personally, as well as my team of elite coaches on how you can have the marriage, health and wealth you deserve, then go down below, click on that first link, and you'll be able to book a coaching session with our team. Where we'll build our, a custom roadmap for you absolutely free. I hope you got value. See you for the next podcast episode.